let us take the properties of alkenes. The alkenes are having the double bond that is they are unsaturated and the bond is having the one is sigma bond, the other one is a, a pi bond that means it is a, a loose bond. So, electron availability is there, they are electron rich. So, these two qualities together makes the compound some special. So, therefore, they undergo one characteristic reaction, electrophilic addition reactions, electrophilic addition reaction. This is the most uh, important character reaction of the alkenes because they are rich uh, they are going to lose the electron so electrophiles will attack on the alkenes they are unsaturated therefore they are going to give the addition reactions however they also undergo oxidation the concept of oxidation is uh, the losing the electrons loss of electrons is an oxidation so, again once again the alkenes are rich with electron therefore, metals like uh, manganese plus 7 if it is added it takes electrons and the alkene undergo oxidation metal ions undergo reduction. So, the alkenes are very much susceptible for the de-electronation that is why they undergo several types of the oxidation. They also undergo polymerization this is the third characteristic reaction. Because again uh, the double bonded unsaturation nature makes to open up and to add something. So, if nothing is added one compound adds on the other compound and then finally, results in the uh, big polymer formation. So, starting materials are called monomers and this ethylene for example, undergoes polymerization to give the polyethylene. So, this is the third uh, reaction and they also undergo one special reaction called allylic substitution, allylic substitution. Allylic means a double bond next carbon, the carbon which makes double bond is called vinylic, then next carbon is called allylic. On that carbon hydrogens if they present, they show hyperconjugation or they detach and attach such hydrogens are reactive. So, such hydrogens undergo substitution. So, all such reactions come under this fourth type. So, these four are the, the more important here and there like in the electrophilic addition reaction at the end. We also see sometimes HBr in presence of peroxide undergoes a free radical addition like that here and there we will slight deviation from the main reactions we may observe. But the fundamental reactions, the all these four reactions are because of this uh, presence of double bond and the richness of electrons on the system are responsible for these four reactions. Now, let us take the first reaction electrophilic addition reaction and see how the general addi electrophilic addition takes place and what exactly the mechanism and what are the examples. Uh, let us see. So, the first reaction is a uh, electrophilic addition reaction. So, in this reaction if I take ethylene as a simple example to explain the mechanism we can take two slight variation examples one is like H x we take in this a uh, x if it is a, a more electronegative element like halogen, the bond already polarized to a, a delta plus and the delta minus. If such system is coming nearer to the ethylene, ethylene is said to be having the loose bond. So, electrons are there. So, as it comes closer and closer, the positive nature on the hydrogen and the electron density on the ethylene will have an attraction. Slowly the hydrogens comes closer and closer. As it comes closer, the attraction increases and the pi bond opens into full minus and plus. 
So on the minus the ethylene at that stage you can find that a full minus is formed on the carbon. So this takes place when hydrogen comes very close. By the time the HCl opens up into become into the full plus. So this is called step one now. So in the step one the proton is attacking or minus charge attacking on the proton will make a bond formation. The other side we get a clear positive charge and uh, that is called as a intermediate species. This is called what? Intermediate species. When we get intermediate species after step 1 that is the electrophile after added what you get is called intermediate species. On this uh, now the Cl minus. If initially only the X minus Cl minus or better say this is an example but X minus let us take. This X minus if it comes in the second state there is a plus charge there is no problem. But if first only if X minus comes this is electron rich. So repulsion will take place only first electrophile will add that is why then X minus will add on the other carbon. So finally what happens is one side X the other side hydrogen both are added on one each side. So therefore what you will get is a, a saturated product uh, is the uh, answer. Saturated product is formed this is your answer. So addition reaction is completed then the product is formed. Uh, this product uh, in these brackets you need not to show in fact the product is saturated quite a stable compound when compared with the stability of the alkene alkene is having a double bond so reactive it is then after the reaction the unsaturation has become into saturation so stability is there so most of this electrophilic addition reactions are all addition reactions are taking place spontaneously because the the products are more stable than the starting metal. That means you die, you find uh, many times uh, the heating catalyst all such things are not much necessary. But to get unsaturated from the saturation it is slightly difficult relatively the addition reactions are favorable uh, reactions. Now in this reaction we find there are two steps are there step 1 and the step 2. So step 1 is the slow reaction step 2 is considerably minus attacking on the plus it is an ionic type of reaction totally so fast reaction. So electrophile attacking is the uh, redetermining reaction the intermediate stability slightly differs depending upon the structure of the alkene as it a uh, more stabilized uh, the reaction will become more and more fast and the stability of the alkene is the one of the factor in the driving the reaction. So instead of uh, HX uh, now you can take uh, a molecule like a chlorine molecule if I take then each side 1 1 chlorine will come but the polarization in the chlorine initially you may not find whereas in the HX type uh, already polarized it is. In the Cl2 there is no polarization but as it moves towards ethylene, ethylene is rich therefore the double bond the single bond polarizes you will get a delta minus plus on one side delta minus on the other side. So polarization arises in the sigma bond due to the presence of this molecule is called a inductomeric effect this is called temporary inductive effect. Pi bond polarization in presence of reagent is called the electromeric effect or temporary mesomeric effect. This both the phenomenon are useful to explain how the reaction takes place. So finally what you will get is a saturated product. Uh, now let us take the example the HX is equals to addition of a HCl or HBr this both all come under the category of the 1 H and the 1 iodine that is 1 halogen H i H where all this adds to the ethylene 
without any uh, catalyst or such thing because it has a ready openization and then uh, attacking also easy and you will get ethyl chloride formation. If HBr is added, ethyl bromide and so on. In all these things, first plus party that is H plus will be added passing through the carbocation and then minus party will come under the second stage. So, you can take with HBr even with HI addition of HI is also use ethyl iodide. Then with uh, X2 examples can be halogen, halogen, chlorine or uh, Br, Br that is bromine. Addition of iodine also you can show nothing wrong because addition iodine adds but reverse reaction takes place. So, that is not that good reaction. So, let us take uh, the other reaction that is if you pass chlorine gas into the gas of ethylene spontaneous reaction takes place and you will get one side one chlorine the other side other. So, here also first Cl plus will be added electrophile is Cl plus and then you will get a carbocation like this Cl containing a ethyl carbocation on which Cl minus is added then you will get the uh, 1 to dichloroethane is also known as ethylene chloride or ethylene dichloride. So, similarly if bromine is added you will get this one. But several times the bromine instead of only bromine it is dissolved in the CCl4 then added so that a, a dibromo product is formed. The dibromo product has one application also. Here the bromine CCl4 liquid will have a red colored in uh, color dark red color will be there. You just add one drop to the ethylene this red color is consumed by uh, ethylene to get the um, 1, 2 dibromoethane thereby the red color is consumed. So, color will become decolorization. In this case a chlorine is not a red colored one light green will be there in the form of liquid, but in the gas you do not find any much color. So, the color changing you do not find, but in the bromine is a dark red dissolved in a solvent suitably otherwise vapors will be very corrosive and lot of wastage of reagents will be there. So, the bromine is always dissolved in one suitable solvent. The solvent means that itself should not participate in the reaction. So, here carbon tetrachloride works as a, a suitable solvent. So, the bromine dissolve in this solvent then add it no heating no other catalyst is required. First Br plus will be added the other side carbon will become carbocation Br minus is added. After two step reaction you will get dibromo that is 1, 2 dibromo or vicinal dibromo ethane is formed. Okay. So, this is bromination or halogenation second example for the addition of Hx. Third example is the addition of a HOX. HOX examples can be HOCl you can take, HOBr you can take. In the case of HOCl call it as a hypochlorous, hypochlorous acid. Similarly, call it as a hypobromous acid. In the case of HOCl you have one point. Uh, this HOCl can split up into the two types H plus and OCl minus or Cl plus and OH minus. Both the way you can break into cation and anion, cation and the anion. But uh, in this reaction it is uh, electrophile is going to start our reaction. So, in the first case electrophile is H plus in the second case uh, Cl is the electrophile. An electronegative element having positive charge is more reactive or a stronger electrophile. So, therefore, we need an electrophile here. So, therefore, the HOCl breaks up into Cl plus OH minus rather than like this. This is also possible when 
sodium hydroxide you add it breaks like this and makes the neutralization or salt formation but in the addition reactions it adds like this so ethylene reacts with the hocl when hocl is added first cl plus is added get carbocation and the other carbon then oh minus so you will get one side cl one side oh so this compound from oh side if you number you call it as a 2 chloro ethanol or people also say ethylene chlorohydrine ethylene chlorohydrine or uh, from ethanol this is the uh, first carbon alpha beta beta chloro ethanol systematically you can say 2 chloro ethanol that is IUPAC name however it is called ethylene chlorohydrine ethylene chlorohydrine So, one side Cl, one side OH. Attacking species, remember Cl plus and uh, not H plus. One side Cl, one side OH. First Cl plus attacks, all these points you can remember. HOBr also, first Br plus followed by the OH minus addition takes place. This is the third example. The fourth one, the addition of a uh, HOH that is water addition. We have one problem with this water. Only water if you add ethylene and water do whatever the no reaction takes place. Water and ethylene has no reaction. However, the same condition you take water and add some a few drops of that salt. A few drops of a concentrated sulfuric acid. The acid should be concentrated very few drops of NF but in fact uh, the sulfuric acid and water together is known as dilute uh, sulfuric acid right. So many times questions uh, will be asked what happens when ethylene is treated with the dilute sulfuric acid. In the dilute sulfuric acid we have water is the one that is actually going to react with this ethylene. So, it splits up into HOH and then adds on this compound and you will get one side H, the other side CH2OH. In the elimination principles we have seen, elimination reaction supported by the sulfuric acid like this here also, the mechanism is a slightly deviated from the regular addition. In the regular addition, electrophile, nucleophile, one after the one we are adding, is not it? But in this reaction, first from the sulfuric acid, a proton is added. This proton is added as a step 1, H plus from sulfuric acid is added. So, let us add one side H plus, the other side you will get a carbocation, right? Now, on this air, the whole water is added, not the OH minus, the whole water will have a two lone pairs. Using one lone pair, it will attack on the carbocation. Then you will get a, a CH2, one side hydrogen, the other side will have a the water hanging to this carbon, right? But uh, the water will have a one positive charge like this. So, this is called now hydroxy group with one proton extra. It is called protonated ethanol or oxonium ion. O plus is called oxonium ion. Now, from here one H plus is deleted and this gives the ethanol. So, minus of H plus. Where this H plus goes, uh, this goes back to the sulfuric acid. So, from sulfuric acid we have taken one proton then whole water is added from the water one proton is deleted that is adjusted to the sulfuric acid in this reaction if i take uh, the question may be asked like this if ethylene is treated with the um, instead of h2o d2o is added or sulfuric acid can be deuterated then asked either way it can be asked let us take HOH is added in presence of D2SO4, what happens? 
if really they are HOH breaks and then add, you will get ordinary ethanol. But because they do to SO4, we have seen already D from the sulfuric acid will add one side. So, in the answer, it is evident that you find one side D is there, the whole water attacks and one H goes, that H is adjusted in the D2SO4. So, in the ethanol, OH will be there ordinary, but D2SO4 will become into HDSO4. The formation of a, uh, HD, that is one D is given, so in that place the H of the water is adjusted. So, change in the catalyst with uh, with reference to the isotope, uh, you can find the uh, D2SO4 is being converted into the HDSO4 that clearly shows that it is not the water breaks and then adds. First, uh, the sulfuric acid proton is added, then the one proton from the water is given back and that is going to the sulfuric acid as in the mechanism. It passes through carbocation that you have to note one thing and the role of sulfuric acid, it is catalyst however, catalyst will not start the reaction, it will hasten up the reaction. That means, even absence of sulfuric acid, a small reaction takes place therefore, but that reaction becomes fast by the catalyst. The catalyst has a positive role here, it participates in the reaction but it is regenerated back at the end. Therefore, the concentration of the sulfuric acid before the reaction, during the reaction, after the reaction, the concentration remains constant. However, one proton we are using, but we are getting back. So, therefore, finally, the sulfuric acid concentration is not uh, consumed at all. It is only just catalyst. That is why I said very specifically, very few drops of sulfuric acid is enough to promote this uh, reaction. So, the final addition is a uh, HOH, no doubt this is called also as a hydration, water addition is known as hydration. Reverse mechanism in the elimination that is in the preparation of alkenes we have seen dehydration, hydration exactly reverse that is the proton attacking on the OH and the water is deleted, carbocation H is deleted, double bond formation, you will get the ethylene that is the reverse mechanism to the hydration is called the dehydration mechanism. The fifth reaction is addition of a H2SO4 itself, but it should be concentrated sulfuric acid, one condition. The other condition is one is concentrated sulfuric acid. Second condition is at room temperature only, that means around 25 degrees centigrade, you have to use it. No, the higher temperatures, higher temperatures, some problem after added, the product comes, the product undergoes removal of the sulfuric acid, desulfonation takes place. So, in this reaction, first H plus will be added one side the entire HSO4 adds. So, after H plus addition, you get a carbocation. The carbocation is added with the HSO4 minus that side in. HSO4 will be added on the other side. Then the final product will be CH2 plus hydrogen CH3. The other side CH2 OS double bond O double bond O OH. In fact, this particular part, you can call it as a sulphate. So, therefore, the name of the compound, you can say ethyl hydrogen sulphate. The compound is called ethyl hydrogen sulphate is formed. It has two qualities. One is after getting the product, if you heat it, then minus of sulfuric acid leads to give back the original compound. So, this is only happens only at room temperature. If you heat the final product or if you maintain the high temperature, the sulfuric acid addition will become waste, it will give back the original one. Or after getting this one, you just add some water and slightly heat it, add water and heat it. The whole group will go and you will get the 
OH. Even at room temperature also, if you just want add it, the whole HS44 group will be deleted and it will be adjusted 1 OH. Now, you will find surprise that such a small OH minus, how it is able to replace a big group. The criteria is not the size of the group, but the OH, the OH minus is from water. Water is a weak acid. So, therefore, it is uh, anion that is called conjugate base of that weak acid will be the uh, strong enough. So, strong uh, base is replacing the HSO4 is a weak base because it is origin is from the sulfuric acid, a strong acid. Strong acid, the conjugate base is weak. So, weak one is being replaced by the strong base of the OH. So, it is justified, it is a nucleophilic substitution reaction. So, how do you prepare ethanol means? In the third method, we have seen the fourth method, addition of water to the ethylene in presence of a few drops of sulfuric acid gives ethanol or add only sulfuric acid after this ethyl hydrogen sulfate getting add some water you will get it. Either if you heat it or not is not the criteria. Just adding water also you will get it. Better is little slightly warm it. But without adding the water, if you heat it, a decomposition taking place, you will get back the ethylene formation. That is the sulfonated products are not that stable at higher temperatures. So, as you go on heat it, the sulfuric acid will come out from this side H that side HS44 will come, ethylene will be formed again. So, we have an application like for example, if a mixture of ethane and ethylene is there, two gases are there, mixture is there, pass into the concentrated sulfuric acid uh, maintained at room temperature. Okay. These are the mixture of gases pass into the a beaker containing the concentrated sulfuric acid at room temperature. So, what happens this N will be released out, but the E is absorbed in sulfuric acid because ethylene reacts with sulfuric acid forms ethyl hydrogen sulfate and therefore, it will undergo solubility. Alkanes are not soluble therefore, N will come out. After that what you do is you heat it uh, now from the beaker E will be coming out. Why? Because ethyl hydrogen sulfate on heating liberates the ethylene which is comes out. So, a mixture of A and A in mixture if it is there with you, that mixture you pass into the sulfuric acid get first in, then later in. So, this getting one after the one serves as a separation of alkene from alkene or a purification of alkene from a traces of alkenes if it is there. An alkane gas, ethane gas having some traces of ethylene in that. How to remove that ethylene means pass through sulfuric acid, all in is absorbed, in will be coming out or uh, in I want to purify uh, something is I am expecting. So, in dissolve in sulfuric acid regenerate back in the form of the in. That is also a purification of alkene itself. So, these all these uh, five methods uh, are under coming under the simple electrophilic addition reactions. However, all these five methods follow certain norms the, that is first point is they are all following electrophilic addition first plus part will be added uh, after step 1 carbocation will come then second part will be added. So, this additions follow a principle called a, a Marconi cuff rule also. Let us see how the uh, on a slight uh, uh, variation in the uh, taken example, if it is not ethylene, if it is taken propene, we can show such a uh, phenomena. Instead of ethylene, let us take an example propene we will take. The propene when I add HBr, as we have seen already, the step 1 is H plus attack, right. Uh, so, the H plus is first in step 1 we are adding, right. So, where it can be added means uh, these two carbons now they are not identical. If it is not there, they were, 
But now this is one hydrogen, two hydrogen, this side methyl is there, that side methyl is not there. So, such a type of alkenes, if you cut here, you are getting a two uh, unequal parts, isn't it? So, such a type of unequal parts containing alkenes are called a unsymmetrical alkene. Unsymmetrical alkene. Not a asymmetric. Asymmetric is chedal carbon. Okay. So, whenever unsymmetrical alkene is added with a HBr or similar to the HX, you can commonize also when HX is added to this one. So, this minus part here, the Br minus goes where hydrogens are less. That means uh, the final answer um, or otherwise let us see the stepwise mechanism also you can see reason comes automatically now. So, let me say the H plus has a chance of adding terminal carbon or middle carbon. So, if terminal carbon H plus is added, you will get an intermediate making the carbocation in the center, right? This is one chance. The other chance is proton may be added in the center. So, that also you can see that the hydrogen is added in the center, carbocation is formed on the terminal one, which is a first one is a 2 degree one, this is a 1 degree one. In the inductive effect application, we have seen 2 degree is more stable than the the 1 degree, right? 3 degree, 2 degree, 1 degree is the order. We have seen hyperconjugation also. Here, 6 hyperconjugations, unsaturated carbon, saturated, next immediate carbon, this side 3 that. So, we have 2 inductive effects are there, inductive effect application, okay? And 6 hyperconjugation, hyperconjugation application, both says that this is more stable because it is a 2 degree 1. Now, here it is 1 degree is having 2 alkyls one side only. So, number of alkyl groups means it comes only 1, 1 alkyl group is there. These 2 only shows hyperconjugation not the next one. So, only 2 hyperconjugation. So, if I say take inductive effect here 2 plus i effects are there and 6 hyperconjugable hydrogens are here only 1 plus i effect and uh, 2 hyperconjugations. So, both the ways uh, you can justify this is the more stable one. So, always this will be more in quantities formed. Therefore, the final product that is the Br minus uh, attacks takes place on this compound more leading to give the bromo compound in the center. This will become a major product. So, therefore, ultimately my observation is whenever I add HBr to the alkene propene, 2 bromo propane will become major, whereas consequently on the small quantity formation will be bromine goes to the terminal carbon is the minor product. So, this is what in fact was observed by a scientist called a Marconi cuff rule. Marconi cuff is the scientist name. He observed that. So, therefore, the rule is named and the Marconi cuff. So, rule he said Marconi cuff's rule. He said that in fact at that time the features like inductive effect, hyperconjugation, all such things are perhaps not known. So, therefore, he observed taking several alkenes and adding on reagents like HX and he said whenever a HX is a commonized example is added to alkene, X minus is added to the carbon with where number of hydrogens are less, right? So, x minus goes to here, number of hydrogens 1, 2. So, he said that x minus goes. Actually, what is attacking species H plus, not the, the step 1, what is attacking H plus? So, H plus going this side at that side. So, therefore, it is not x minus. He also not said x minus adds in the step 1. He defined the rule that x minus goes this side. He never said first attacking is x minus. You cannot find a find fault with Marconi cuff rule. But the x is a hetero element in the product x is very prominent to see. So, therefore, he <coughs> you can define on himself that why inside uh, that the he said correct only. So, the x minus goes to the carbon where hydrogens less, but actually key is with the H plus. H plus will add on a 
carbon so that a more stable intermediate is formed that is 2 degree is formed consequently the product will be the 2 bromo will be the major one the same the alkene if i add hbr in presence of hydrogen peroxide in presence of hydrogen peroxide the rule goes in a different way that is called anti to the marconi cup rule so we say this rule is called anti marconi cup rule anti marconi cup rule this rule is only applicable when peroxides are there this is first condition if peroxides are not there the rule will not be applicable second one the example in the marconi cup rule can be a hcl can be a hoh can be a hox can be sulfuric acid all examples you can take but in anti marconi cup rule only hbr not even hi and hcl also will not work out so anti marconi cup rule not with the water addition sulfuric acid addition only hx in that hbr is the only example because the, the first peroxides in this rule what happens the peroxide will break up into two pieces of oh dot that oh dot react with hbr and taking the h into this one so you will get h2o and br dot right where this br dot will attack now means a uh, br dot attacks on the terminal because in this case what is attacking species in the second case br dot that is bromine free radical that will be added on the terminal carbon so that intermediate is formed once again 2 degree but it is free radical right so this is your intermediate species which is a 2 degree more stabilized so therefore consequently the 1h from the water will be again added on this one you will get the 1 bromo compound as a major product so this type of the 1 bromo compound formation as a major from the same propene and the same hbr but the main difference is in presence of peroxide this type of effect is mainly due to the peroxide therefore it is also called as peroxide effect or it was studied actually by the karash a scientist so it is called karash rule actually karash rule but it is reverse to the marconi cup rule therefore it is commonly said as anti marconi cup rule it is only by the hbr in presence of peroxide however peroxide you can have a slight uh, marginal differences like instead of hydrogen peroxide you can take dialkyl peroxide like dimethyl diethyl dipropyl you can also have a carboxylic acid peroxides both the sides carboxylic acids through peroxy bond if it is linked so they are called acid peroxides you can take dibenzoic acid peroxide and so on such peroxides also they split up into peroxides and then take up this h dot leaving the br dot as attacking species so first attacking br dot adds on the terminal so that 2 degree free radical comes then h dot adds so bromine finally goes one bromo is major here two bromo is major exactly reverse answer that's why anti marconi cup rule what all we explain it just reverse to this marconi cup rule therefore it is said to be a anti marconi cup rule or peroxide effect or karash rule the effect it is apart from these five electrophilic addition reactions there are two more reactions which are important for the uh, je students that is the sixth electrophilic addition is hydroboration 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 means addition of hydrogen and the boron the meaning is very clear but the hydroboration is followed by the um, oxidation or treatment uh, with of the product uh, oxidation with uh, hydrogen peroxide this also should be attached otherwise the hydroboration means only adding the hydrogen boron Uh, is not correct actually but the hydroboration means you have to do that also consequently so let us see what happens in the hydroboration uh, you take alkene and then add a, a boron hydrogen containing compound is bh3 actually this is the 
smallest compound, but BH3 is very unstable. It exists as a 2 BH3 exists as a B2H6. This is called diborane. So, you have a, a stable compound. Diborane is very stable. So, you add diborane to the alkene. In the diborane, you have a boron with the attached to the hydrogen. So, this bond uh, breaks up into plus and minus in fact, right. So, the BH bond opens into minus plus. There are some mechanisms where BH bond without breaking it adds one sidedly. Therefore, it is cis addition we explain. However, it is easy to explain that minus and plus if you consider the H is a minus. So, it follows Marconi Kaff rule. H minus goes to where? Where hydrogen is less. So, therefore, let us add H minus to the hydrogen less side and the boron adds to the more side. So, therefore, compound will become like this CH3, CH2 with the CH2 attached to the boron. So, boron valency is 3. So, therefore, 3 times these hydrogens will be adding here that will become a trialkyl borane that is called was trialkyl borane. It is not the final answer trialkyl borane. Addition is over in fact trialkyl borane trialkyl borane. This trialkyl borane we are oxidizing with the hydrogen peroxide. Remember that it should not be treated with water. If it is added water, what happened? H comes this side, it will become propane. OH goes to the boron, boron will become tri OH that is hydroxide. But this will become into a alkane that is no more use. Alkene will become into alkane. Instead, if you add hydrogen peroxide, each side a OH is added. So, 3 alkyls will take the 3 OHs from this side. 3 OHs will go to that boron. So, boron will become into trihydroxide or you can write that H3BO3 that is a, a boron with 3 OHs tries. This side what comes is a, a propane with OH. Where that OH? OH will be on the terminal carbon that is 1 propanol comes. 1 propanol. The same propane we have seen in the previous case. Uh, when I add water in presence of sulfuric acid, it follows a Marconi Kaff rule and the product is 2 propanol. Right? Now, here this is also adding H minus is a Marconi Kaff rule only. So, literally speaking, if you take the mechanism, H minus goes to this one means Marconi Kaff rule. But the product is it Marconi Kaff rule product? No. So, 1 propanol is said to be a anti Marconi Kaff rule product. So, this is a something special just like a magic it is taking place. You are adding boron and the hydrogen in accordance with the Marconi Kaff rule. The product form trialkyl borane when oxidized are treated with the hydrogen peroxide. Each side we get a OH, OH it becomes into pieces. This side alkyl gets one OH, it will become one propanol. Carefully observe here, the propene when treated with water, previously we said minus party goes hydrogen less though, so OH is minus party goes in center. So, you got the two opitonol. This is Marconi Kaff rule product. One propanol is we said anti Marconi Kaff rule product. So, in this case, uh, we got a anti Marconi Kaff rule product by following the Marconi Kaff rule followed by the hydrogen peroxide addition. So, this rule is something litigation type actually. At a low level question if it comes, will the hydroboration follow Marconi Kaff rule, anti Marconi Kaff rule means some book says, because product is anti Marconi Kaff rule, let us say anti Marconi Kaff rule is uh, prevailing. But strictly speaking, it is Marconi Kaff rule we follow product becomes into anti Marconi Kaff rule that is one propanol comes as a, a major product. If you want two propanol ordinary hydration with sulfuric acid at room temperature the two propanol will be the major one. This is called what a hydroboration and followed by the oxidation with the peroxide. Here any proton containing solvents should not be added the only hydrogen peroxide is allowed. Any water or alcohol acid if you add 
you get proton added this side minus part T goes to this side acetic acid H comes here acetate anion so that is boron acetate will become this will become propane so propane is no more useful isn't it there is no significance for that type of the addition so not proton giving but hydrogen peroxide when you add each side will be boron so our propyl group takes a OH on the terminal carbon that becomes a anti marconic approved product another electrophilic addition is a oxymercuration oxymercuration and demercuration so by seeing this heading one can understand oxymercuration means addition of some oxygen addition of hg that is mercury demercuration means mercury is removed that means what remains in the compound means maybe oxygen is retained we are added to but removed only mercury so what remains in the product is net is addition of some oxygen containing compound maybe alcohols or ketones maybe some oxygenated compounds are formed that is the just guess up work we can do it is absolutely right also but the equation is not that uh, so simple it is oxymercuration means uh, we will take some alkene like propene let us take on the propene we are adding the hg with ococh3 taken twice this is called acetate anion in two times because this is plus two mercuric acetate an aqueous solution we add okay right water dissolved mercuric acetate is added here so mercuric acetate breaks up into mercury into plus one and acetate anion that is OCOCH3 the whole thing as a plus and another O minus and COCH3 as a minus party so one bond we open so HG plus and this is all minus party this is plus party which adds first uh, we know it is electrophilic addition follows Marconikov rule so plus goes where hydrogen is more minus goes where hydrogen is less so let me finally finish the first uh, electrophilic addition so electrophile is added so you get a carbocation in the center 2 degree which is a stable one right so you get a CH2 uh, uh, HG OCOCH3 now we have small discussion at this level this mercury will have a, a lone pairs here and this lone pair will have a, a tie up of this carbocation and this lone pair so the lone pair will be having a some tie up or bonding with the carbocation so therefore it will get the carbocation will become some stability however this reaction now this is not the anion that go and attack on the carbocation in fact it is aqueous solution is there isn't it from this aqueous solution water molecule will come and then add it on this carbocation right and uh, after addition of water one proton is deleted net is uh, the OH settles on there so the mercury OCOCH3 is still there like this on the one side of the carbon this completes in the first step oxymercuration is over one oxygen containing group is added one mercury containing group is added now the second one is demercuration for removal of the demercuration we are using the sodium borohydride is a reducing agent which reduces this two bonds uh, and you will get a H and H so this will become acetic acid this will become propanol so one of the answer is propanol the mercury is in fact it is said to be released as a mercury elemental level mercury is formed the another product is a acetic acid CH3COOH acetic acid is formed mercury is released and then this is called 2 propanol in fact uh, adding the water sulfuric acid also you will get this one only the same product is formed even from water and the, the sulfuric acid concentrated sulfuric acid if you add also you will get the same this 2 propanol 
you also getting the two propanol this way. Then what is the speciality of this oxymercuration and demercuration? Anyhow, you come from this way also two propanol only. In the previous case, uh, if you add water sulfuric acid, two propanol, but hydrobration gives one pro one propanol. That's something different. But here same answer is coming. What is the significance or the speciality of this mercuration means? Uh, because the carbocation is attached to this uh, through in the in the intermediate stage, uh, the carbocation is attached. So therefore, if carbocation in this case it is not possible, but if in the cases like in some cases carbocation sometimes undergo rearrangement. If it is 2 degree, if there is a chance of becoming 3 degree, it will definitely undergo rearrangement. So, in that rearrangement because of this tie up uh, rearrangement will not take place. So, therefore, in the oxymercuration demercuration no rearrangement takes place. This is specially we say therefore, without rearrangement, without rearrangement. This is the speciality of the reaction. But in the case we have taken a propene to explain the mechanism. So, therefore, propene anyhow 2 degree is there if a proton jumps or something jumps it will become 1 degree. So, 2 degree to 1 degree not possible therefore, in the case of propene you cannot explain that feature that is the rearrangement feature, but we can take another example right now you can make a statement that oxymercuration demercuration will not allow or avoids the rearrangement. So, therefore, without rearrangement I want Marconi Kaffrul product that is 2 propanol you can go this way.